Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in to Bluegrass Hub of Garden TV. It's our first new episode of 2023. And of course, we kind of wrapped up last year. You kind of taken the reins because I was out I sick. I know, I missed you. <laughs> it was so weird yeah. talking to myself in the kitchen. Yeah, yeah, doing it all by yourself is a little yeah. different than having somebody to kind of bounce yeah. off of. But we thought it'd be a great way to kick off the new year with Kate once again with some great ideas yes. to hopefully enlighten our taste buds. Yeah, yeah, and you were saying you're looking for some high protein ideas because mm -hmm. it helps to balance your blood sugar, keep you stable, yeah. energized all day long. So that's what we're doing today. I've Very got nice two it. simple, high protein, easy, healthy um, snack ideas that are great for on the go because I don't know about you, I'm always like on the go trying to grab something healthy and if you have something ready to go, it makes it... That helps you make better decisions, yep. right? Because so it's the easier. lack of planning that seems to get us in trouble sometimes. Yeah, yeah. So. and both things I'm going to share today are quick. So, I mean, nice. with time, it just takes a couple of minutes, you know, on Sunday to prepare. You can portion them out for the week and grab and go. And then, it, again, it makes it easy to make a good decision. And, and they're delicious. I mean, can't go wrong with, with healthy snacks that taste good. Well, she's never failed me yet. So, we'll be back here in just a few minutes. Stay tuned and we'll get started. Watch WKYT News live and on demand, totally free with no subscription. Local news, first alert weather, and original investigations. Stream WKYT for free now. Thanks for keeping it here. Okay, Kate, what are we doing? Yeah, so our first thing we're making is called protein bark. And this is a really fun one if you have kids to get them in the kitchen because you sort of can kind of lay out the foundation and then add whatever you want to it. So we're doing raspberry and chocolate because nice. I don't know about you, but a little chocolate always kind of curves my sweet tooth. Raspberries are good fiber. Mm -hmm. And then of course, Greek yogurt is going to be the protein. So okay. I'll have you open that up and I'm just going to add a little bit of honey just for some sweetness because I'm using a plain yogurt. Okay. Um, you could use a flavored yogurt if you want, but I'd rather use plain and then sweeten it to my you know, preferences. Absolutely. Um, you could put maple syrup in here, agave, anything would work. Okay. So stir that up. And then I've just got a baking sheet here that I've got like a little sill pat mat on. Uh, you could do like parchment paper on it as well. Okay. I would recommend putting something down because you don't want the yogurt to stick. Right. Makes it a little easier. And then you're just going to take your yogurt and kind of smear it around. You want like a, a flat surface. Um, you want it to look like kind of like peppermint bark. Okay. Um, essentially, we're just creating like a good smooth surface to put our fruit on. And then I am going to cut some raspberries up um, and some dark chocolate. I like to do this in the summer with like strawberries and chocolate. Ooh, um, you yeah. could do it with like blueberries, but it's really just one of those things where, you know, you sort of learn the technique and then make it your own. And again, if you get your kids involved, like they can kind of pick what they want in their bark. Perfect. That looks good. And then I'll let you kind of spread around the raspberries. Okay. Chop yeah. up some dark chocolate. And then I'm gonna hit it with a little granola too, just for some crunch. I just like that little bit of little like- texture. Yep, that textural difference. And we're gonna freeze this. It's gonna almost taste like frozen yogurt. Mm. So it's gonna be sweet and kind of creamy. There's some chocolate. Okay. And then just a little granola. Right over top. This is fun. I had a little yogurt on my, on my hand there. <laughs> Still there. <laughs> I love that when you turn, you know, that's one, one tip I share with my clients is, you know, when you are trying to live a healthier lifestyle, like make it fun. And I feel like this just, you know, again, this took what? Two minutes to make? That's really, yeah. really easy. Easy. And it's fun. And you can make like four or five different sheets with all different kinds. Keeps in the freezer for, you know, up to a week. Yeah. So you could prep it for the entire week. Um, so I'm just going to pop this into the freezer. Okay. It needs about two hours to firm up. You want it to get nice and frozen. Yeah. And then once it does that, we'll cut it up and portion it out. All right. Sounds good. Stay tuned. We are back with Jimmy Nash at the home that we visited last time. And, you know, and I forgot to mention, this is what you call the tricked out farmhouse. Right. Exactly. <laughs> it's a beautiful farmhouse. Oh, my it's gosh. like every room's got so much character and the customer they went through and had their inspiration pictures and... You know, each room was purposely done, and it looks great. And the staircase is a beautiful way to enter the house. And yeah, I feel like if I had a, a staircase like this in my house, I would probably just walk around like an evening gown, you know, like prancing up and down. Or something. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, but, it's very elegant and unexpected, like you said. Yeah, and it has some nice farmhouse touches. Like even these balusters are really cool. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing how sturdy it is. You wouldn't think. You know, something on a radius and these little yeah. bitty spindles would be that strong. But well, especially at the corner up there. You know, like typically yeah. like lots of times you'll see like a post right, right. there. But that just all yeah. just comes down. Yeah. 
I love the lighting and the beams, the view through there. And then of course you've got that amazing view in the great room. Exactly. Uh, all of those windows and um, Anderson's doors that just, yeah. It's, Looking over the lake, it's nice, just saying. Yeah, very, which, very nice. which we built um, when we first started the house. So it wasn't there hmm. when we started. And then we took some dirt from a couple other houses and brought it all out here and our excavator made the pond and now it's got fish in it and it's pretty cool. Yeah, so I love the fact that over the last year we have, we're, you know, we're at the tricked out farmhouse, but then we've seen stuff that's been very, a lot of varieties in regards to design style. Exactly. And probably the hottest thing now is the modern, that modern look. Mm -hmm. And so our townhomes have it. Some houses in Patchen this past year had it. And a lot of the new designs as well have it as well. And so this is a farmhouse and it's on 40 acres, but you know, in the reserve, we have some painted brick houses as well. And um, you know, they're, they're very modern looking. So yeah. uh, it's, it's extremely popular. Yeah, I do like this one though, because to me, even though it is a farmhouse, it still has a little bit of like modern flair. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, a lot of clean lines, mm -hmm. not a lot of gaudy trim. Even like these cased openings are, you know, they don't have a lot of detail to them, but they're very wide and they're, they're heavy and they're very appropriate for the size of the house. And again, I mentioned it in the kitchen. I love the colors because, you know, I, I'm not one that can handle just all white because I just think of all the little handprints everywhere. Right. But this one, you, you take this subtle, these subtle brown tones and everything, it just works beautifully. Yeah, even the white on the house itself mm -hmm. is a really off-white. Mm -hmm. And there's, you know, doing these painted brick houses and painted farmhouses, there's hundreds of whites out there that right. we're choosing from. So it's, uh, it's always fun to do that. You got a lot going on in most of your communities. I mean, they, you're just popping up all over the place, new builds. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, if anybody, uh, you know, wants to talk about building, they can reach out to me direct at 859-621-8880 or look at our website. I have a lot of information there. And of course, follow them on Instagram and Facebook. Thanks for keeping it here on Bluegrass Home and Garden TV. If you're just joining in, Kate Horning is with us and we're making some uh, healthy, delicious snacks. Yes. A lot of people, you know, have New Year's resolutions or trying to live a little bit healthier this year. And yeah. this is a great way to hopefully meet some of those goals. Make it easier. And again, making things that taste delicious, but yes. are also going to fuel you lots of protein, yes. get you through the day. So up next, we're going to make protein balls. Okay. So we were talking about you have protein powder and you're like, oh, I don't know what to do with it besides yeah. a smoothie or a shake. Right. This is a really great way to uh, do something a little different. Um, and these are awesome for on the go. So if Love you want to put them in your purse, you can take them with you. There's no shaking anything up, no making a mess. Okay. Um, so we're just going to mix up a couple of ingredients. It's really easy. So I'll give you the Spatula and you can mix and I'll, I'll chat and dump. So the first thing we have is peanut butter. Okay. So you could use almond butter for this. You could use um, any nut butter you like. I just find peanut butter is, everyone can find it. Everyone loves it. Um, so that is what we're gonna use there. It smells good. It does, and it's gonna give you healthy fat as well. So the goal here is to eat something balanced. So you got a little carb, a little protein, a little fat. It's gonna keep you nice and energized. And then to that, we're gonna add protein powder. I've got two scoops. Uh, here of your favorite. So I have a chocolate one. Okay. Um, I'm assuming I'm, I'm supposed to be mixing it. Yes, right. mix it up. Yep. <laughs> chocolate, peanut butter, um, can't go wrong with that. And then you're going to add some sort of sweetener. I'm using about a quarter cup of maple syrup. Okay. Um, you could also do honey. That would be delicious. Agave, like really whatever. Okay. Whatever you like. Okay. And that's going to kind of create the base. And then the last thing we're going to add, yeah, it's kind of fun. And again, like this would be good with your kids. Get oh, in yeah, the they love, oh my gosh, my little one, Roman, he loves helping in the yeah, kitchen. Yeah, and Sometimes I'm like, okay. <laughs> I mean, you get them doing this, and then it's one of those things where they're going to eat it. Mm -hmm. So They're much more likely to try it. Yes, it's a good way to get them to get a healthy snack. Mm -hmm. So then we're going to add a couple scoops of oats. I'm just using old-fashioned oats here. Okay. I like them because they're a little more hearty, a little higher mm -hmm. in fiber, um, about a cup and a half. Okay. Typically, you just want to mix in enough oats to sort of bind it all together. Yeah, it takes some, it takes some effort. And while you're doing this, you're also getting your arm bark out at least one for the day. I mean, <laughs> I, had to, I had to make you do a little work, I guess. Um, and you, if you do want to pop your peanut butter in the microwave for like a 30 oh, seconds, makes it a little bit easier. Mix. Yeah, it, if it, if you are finding it's hard to mix. And then the last thing we're gonna add. Mm -hmm. Chocolate chips. And you don't have to add these, but you know why not. Well, this way you also feel like you're not depriving yourself yeah. because I feel like anytime you say like, I'm not going to have any chocolate or I'm not going to have any sweets, yes. like 
you will end up eating sweets. Yep, you're setting yourself and, up to yeah, fail. Yeah. yeah, so I try not to like say, oh, I, no, I can't have that. Yeah, Just yeah, but I always tell smart. my clients, if you're going to eat something sweet, make sure it's balanced. Like have mm -hmm. some fat with it to make sure you're not spiking your blood sugar. Right. And then crashing it because that's going to cause you to crave more sweets. Yeah. Where this is going to give you, again, that protein. It's going to evenly burn, mm -hmm. make energy from it. And I love the fact we're using natural sweeteners. Mm -hmm. You know, like I know everybody wants to do like lower sugar. Mm -hmm. you're, you're using more natural yeah. options Sugar's instead of some okay of the fake. You. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. stuff out there that <laughs> I am Amber. not a fan of. I'm just telling you. Yes, we both are, are but not. I don't know what to do with that junk. Yep, and it makes you crave more sweetness because yes. you're not actually getting sugar. So this is going to give you a little, again, boost of sugar, but you've got the fiber from the oats, mm -hmm. the protein from the powder, and the peanut butter. So A well-rounded snack yes. we will have. Yes, when we get back, we'll roll them up yeah. and, and See what give it them a try. Oh, yeah, the, the cheesy puns are coming already this year. <laughs> All right, stay tuned. We'll be back. <laughs> love it, love it. It is that time of year, frozen pipes. No mm -hmm. one wants to come home to a flooded house. No. Art, tell us what we need to do to make sure that it does not happen. Biggest thing is make sure that whenever you have any plumbing on any exterior walls, that they're insulated. Mm -hmm. um, if they're not insulated or if you, if you touch the wall under your sink and it feels really cool, um, leave your cabinet doors open. Uh, it's really not the frozen pipes that you got to worry about it's the uh -oh. thawed Ooh. frozen pipes that you got to worry about because, that correct me there yeah because the frozen pipes are you don't know what's going to happen so when all of a sudden you have no water pressure anywhere that's when it gets scary because when it does thaw where's my issue going to be at so if you you know obviously weather changes mm -hmm. it's kentucky right mm -hmm. But if you're going to be out of town for a prolonged, you know, time and you're unsure what the weather's going to do, it might be a good idea to maybe leave like a small drip and just go ahead and open up those cabinet doors yeah. just in case. Yeah, and what what I've done in the past, if like if I'm going to go somewhere during the winter time, I actually shut my water off and my main water shut yeah. off and I drain my pipes out inside the house. And so I don't have to worry about that. But yeah. when you do that, you got to make sure that you're going to shut your water heater off, uh, whether it's electric, you kill the breaker, if it's gas, you turn mm -hmm. it turn it down or turn it off with your, yeah. with your gas valve. And then you have nothing to worry about at that point. You know, and that's, and you just mentioned something that kind of made me think about it. Mm -hmm. It's not always just the fact that it's cold outside and mm -hmm. that, that, that cold is, is causing a problem. But let's say you're gone and the power goes out for several days. Mm -hmm. That could be the problem. 100%. Now you have no heat. Mm -hmm. And now that's a whole other issue. And we, we run across that. Like there's times when you have houses that are, uh, you know, being, they're trying to be sold, but no one's there. Mm -hmm. there's, there's companies that actually winterize your house. So okay. they actually, they drain your water out. They put antifreeze in your toilet tanks and like RV antifreeze, mm -hmm. stuff like that. Um, and it's, there's ways of doing it. But yeah, when, if you're gonna be gone during the holidays for an extended period of time and you do not have someone to watch your house, think about shutting your water off. All right, well, if people have any questions for you? Mm -hmm. They can give us a call at the office at 859-340-4509. Thanks for coming here, Kate. So hey, it's time to get rolling. Yeah, rolling, rolling. Rolling, rolling. <laughs> We're so weird. <laughs> We're kind of fun. Um, I mean, yeah. It has to be fun, again. Yeah. If you're gonna enjoy it, gotta be fun. Like so this is the texture you're looking for. You can see, you can kind of, if you go like this, it kind of smears to where you know it's gonna stick together. Okay. If it doesn't do this and it looks too dry, just add like a splash of water or okay. almond milk or something. You just wanna make sure that you can actually roll it into balls. Um, the next thing I like to do is just put a little water on my hands or like some avocado oil spray or something. Okay. Um, just makes it easier. You don't have to do it, but then we're just gonna grab it. And I like to do decent sized balls because mm -hmm. I wanna make sure again, like one or two is gonna fill me up um, for a good snack. And then you're just going to roll them like you would like a cookie dough ball. I don't okay. know if that's a good description. And we're just going to roll them and put them on a plate. And they are kind of soft right now, so I like to pop them in the fridge yeah. for about a half hour to firm up before I put them into baggies. Okay. Um, but, yeah, I mean, again, grab your kids, like put them to work, let them roll their balls, and there you go. Again, another, like, what, five? So in 10 minutes, you can literally make all your healthy snacks for the I week. I could just see my kids using these as weapons. Yes, they could. I could definitely see that, too. In the kitchen. <laughs> Little boys. <laughs> I'm like, oh, get your kids Everything involved. Everything like, is an adventure. Yeah. Everything. Yes. Everything. So I'm going to keep on rolling these. Um, so they do need to stay cold. So I will, like, pop them in my purse if I'm heading out for the day. But, like, as far as keeping them stored, um, you want to keep them in the fridge until you're, yeah. you know, ready to consume. Yeah, I mean, well, I, I keep a small little cooler with me pretty much all year long in the car with, with water. And I just put a few ice packs that. in it. So I love that. You know, and again, then you always have what you need. Yeah. Um, and you're not like running into convenience store. Well, who wasn't paid $3 for a bottle of water exactly. where you can get the whole 24 pack for 
for three items. Right, right. And that's like this kind of stuff, you know, protein um, bars are kind of all the rage. All my clients mm -hmm. are always like, oh, I love protein bars. And if you look at the ingredients, they're Lots not always of the yeah. best. Yeah, and there's, there's some... a lot of preservatives. And again, like you go into a convenience store and you're paying, you know, three, four dollars for a decent protein bar. Why not just make them at home? I, I love it. And I'm like I said, I, I have way too many things of protein powder go. that now I'll probably actually, because I'm also not a big fan of the protein powder shakes. Yeah, the texture too. Texture. Mm -hmm. So this might be a way for me to get over the texture. Yeah, it's definitely not chalky. Yeah. And if you are like, I really don't want to take the time to roll these in balls, make them into bars. You could even just, you know, oh, put yeah. them into containers and eat it like cookie dough. <laughs> like you don't have to get, which speaking of that, this, I made these last week and I took one and broke it up over um, Greek yogurt. Ah. It tasted like cookie dough. It was so good. So that's another fun little life hey, hack. Hey, I'm all about easy ways to make eating healthy make yep. sense. Because yep. it has to taste good. Yep, it does. Nobody wants to eat stuff that doesn't taste good. Exactly, yeah. And protein's my goal this year, and we were talking about that earlier. But I'm not a huge, like, I don't love eating, you know, a ton of meat. So for me, I'm always looking for creative ways to get that protein in without just it. sitting there eating a hunk of meat. And this would probably be better than the, the, the fruit snacks I tend to go to when my blood sugar drops. Yeah. Totally. Which aren't bad. They have no artificial colors or anything like that. But I know in the grand scheme of things, they're not really doing a whole lot to help me. Right. So, but. Yeah. You want to make sure everything you choose, you know, is, is going to give you the most nutrition yep. um, that you can get. So these yeah. are a great option. I love it. So yeah, I'm just going to finish rolling this last one out, pop them in the fridge, and then we'll let them firm up and we'll go ahead and put them into little baggies. And I'll show you kind of how I portion them out. And, and then I get to try it. And then you get to try it, of course, <laughs> your favorite part. I know it's all you're waiting for. All right. Stay tuned. <laughs> So we're back at the house today and um, spring is on its way. So I've got the kitchen table set with this beautiful setting of uh, Majalica inspired pieces. Um, it just feels like, you know, any day the green screens just start popping out at us and I just, we keep hoping it's coming, it's coming. So next is we have this wonderful moment in our kitchen and this is how it always looks with this white, um, uh, dishes and we'll literally we'll take stuff down and use it and just put it back up there when I thought well this is an opportunity though to tweak it add a little spring detail to it a little early spring detail um, and I thought well I'm gonna show you how what I do without again working too much so I have these wonderful little cabbage plates got me a little easel I'm not moving anything I am literally sitting that in front of that just layering that in how beautiful I completely changes the whole feel of it and got another piece that we've had and collected for the years I'm going to just set him over there got my little bunny rabbit with my pretty little green and he's ready and see how that connects to that bookcase in the kitchen by adding three things it completely changes how everything feels and it's and it's also using your collection as things you know we're so I have to go buy this stuff and then it just sits in a shelf or sticks in the cabinet. I'm saying, let's just dig it out and use it and display it. And it doesn't have to have a lot of effort to make it look as if you worked hard. Let's go have a, a wonderful lunch together. HouseByJSD.com WKYT is your all blue station. And we're live every Friday on Facebook to talk all things blue. All Blue Preview, every Friday at 3 on Facebook Live. Sponsored by UK Federal Credit Union. Everyday Kentucky, weekdays at 9 a.m. on WKYT. Thanks for coming here. Yes, I let my hair down. Yeah, now that we're done doing yeah. the hard work. I was, I was telling her, I was like, <laughs> when I'm in the kitchen cooking, just because now it's a longer hair, like I feel like yeah. I shed all the time. So anytime I'm like, dealing with it, mixing or cooking things, I'm always like trying to pull my hair back because I'm just like, oh. Well, now we're officially done. So this is the fun part. We get to oh kind of gosh, look at that. package up what we've made and feel like we are ready for the week and of course give it a taste. So this, you can see, I it's been in the freezer for about two hours. It's all nice and like firm. I mean, this feels like a little. Almost looks bark. like white, like chocolate bark. I know, yeah. I know. You could probably like convince yourself that. <laughs> and then all you want to do is just go in there and kind of give it a cut. And I like to do bigger chunks. bigger chunks. Yeah, you could cut it smaller, but I find like, I just, I don't know. Oh yeah, I mean, look at it breaking apart yeah, too. It's literally just frozen yogurt. Cute. And then we're just gonna take our little baggies and I like to, when I'm in the kitchen, like getting ready for the week, like I want it all done, ready to go. So I like to portion it out, 
into my little baggies, just like this. And then, you know, you can just kind of toss in like that. Super cute. Yeah. But if, but if you're taking these with you, you definitely want to keep it, this one kind of cool. Yeah, I would keep them in the freezer and then again, pop them in your cooler until you're ready to eat. Okay. Um, I mean, they can get a little bit, you know, warm, but keep in mind, this is just Greek yogurt, so it will melt. Um, and if it does melt, eat it with a spoon. And then same for the balls. I'm just going to take them. And I like to just put two of them into a little baggie just like that. And I get like a clear container and put it in my fridge and I have like all my snacks so I can usually see them. But I mean, yeah, I'm looking at all your clear containers. <laughs> Got to be organized, right? But how good does that look? And that again, is really cute. Like who wants, who doesn't want to grab for this when, you know, it's there and ready to eat? Yeah. I think uh, Amber uh, just uh. wants to eat. <laughs> she knows me all too well. All right. We'll be back in just a few minutes and we'll uh, get to taste. Hi, Richard Weber here at the barn at Springhouse at Springhouse Gardens. I wanted to tell you what you could do with some of these cuttings that you might have from your own property. Here at Springhouse, we have been using a easy to build wreath frame for probably 30, well, we've been here 27 years. So ever since we started, we've been using these. And the concept behind this, we, we get them with 10 pairs of wires. So that's a 10 inch wreath. Typically for a bigger size wreath, we'll use 12, a 12 inch ring that has 12 pairs of wires. But it's, what we like about this is that you can make your cuttings and it takes about five or six pieces of cutting uh, for each little bundle. And we arrange it like you would a, a floral arrangement. And we just attach them by holding it, twisting that, and it locks it in one bunch at a time. So I've already prepared some of these bunches and I'm just going to go and show you how easy this is. You just attach them one at a time. Again, it's five or six pieces to make a fairly full wreath. And you just have to make sure that you get that good twist on there. Um, so I've got my third one that's going on here. You just attach it. You make sure that the ends go into the, the next one that we're going to be twisting. But Here's the one we're twisting now. And you just go on. I've got seven more of these to do. And what I'm planning to do with this one is actually putting it on an outdoor table uh, and just using it as a centerpiece on a table. But most people use these for hanging on your wall. So either way you want to do it is, is great. There's no rules. And the nice thing about it is that you can just throw as much greenery in or as little mix it up or do all the same thing. But since I'm kind of using up all of the, the last of the greenery from our wreath workshops and our wreath making kits, I'm just kind of putting a little bit of everything in there. And when it's all put together, you won't even really notice that it's a little bit, maybe more of one thing or less of another. Um, the nice thing too about this is you could do this with a group of friends or different people you don't have to think about it too much especially if you let us put the bundles for you and you just kind of spread the bundles out you haven't had to clip it so put that on your wish list for next christmas because we'll be doing these workshops uh, and take home kits again uh, we've had so much fun doing that over the years um, who knows maybe next year we'll be able to do more in-person workshops like we used to um, but I'm going to keep working on this and then we'll show you the finished product in just a minute. And then on this last one, you just have to tuck that in underneath the first one that you did. And you just kind of rearrange this a little bit to cover that last little bunch of wires. And hopefully you don't see anything falling out of it. And you can hang this on your wall or like I'm going to do, put it down on a table. This one's going to actually sit outside, but you could certainly uh, put this in your house as well. Anything that you're using on the inside, get a product called Wilt Proof. Spray that over top of it and it locks in the moisture and it will stay probably for about two months indoors. So outside is going to last a long time uh, as long as it's cool and damp and all that. But I still might put a little bit of Wilt Proof on it as well. But that's it. It's an easy process for using your clippings from your own garden. And you can enjoy it all through not just the holiday season, but all through the winter season. Until next time, you can reach us at Springhouse Gardens, 859-224-1417, or follow us on Facebook and Instagram. We are almost out of time.
but not quite. We have to taste. We have to taste. So which one are we trying first? The protein I'm going to go with this one because I feel like okay. that one's going to, the taste is going to stick longer with yeah. it, I think. I agree. I, I think I'm going to go for it too. All right. Cheers. Oh, <laughs> you lost your chocolate chip. It's like tangy. Mm -hmm. How good is a chocolate though? It's cold. It is cold. <laughs> mm. But I feel like it kind of cuts that craving of like something sweet, mm -hmm. even though there's really it's not cold. much sugar. Yeah, well, it's frozen. <laughs> and again, you can let this sit out for a few minutes before you eat it. Mm. Raspberry good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I feel like you took a big bite. <laughs> Amber, is that with a brain freeze? I have really sensitive teeth too, so. <laughs> so I would definitely recommend letting it sit in the fridge or in your cooler mm -hmm. for a Ooh. little bit before eating instead of pulling out of the freezer here. Yeah, because it's almost so cold that you can't quite even taste everything. Yeah. So. But this would be good in the summer too. Mm. I feel like I would oh, definitely yeah. be snacking on this all summer yeah. long. All right, I'm not. <laughs> I know, smaller bite I'm, this I'm time. I'm gonna take a smaller bite this time. Tastes like cookie dough. <laughs> mm -hmm. That was really good. It reminds me of no-bake cookies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I was just thinking. I'm like, what is this? When I was a kid, mm -hmm. like that was my favorite thing. I'd come home from school and make. I think we made a healthy version of no-bake cookies mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. years ago on the show. Um, mm. Yeah, I mean these are like addictive. I'm a fan of that, and I cannot taste that weird. No, it's not gritty. Protein powder texture yeah. at all so yeah love it. it's creamy and honestly almond butter would be so good with that salted caramel you said you have, have a salted, salted caramel, caramel flavor yeah. like oh my goodness that would be delicious yeah and you could always you know try different things yeah yeah Put raisins cranberries dried cherries yes, all nuts. kinds of stuff so. yeah yeah so this is like think of it as like a blank slate now you know the technique make it your own yeah that's love good it. well cheers to healthy snacking in 2023 thank god now can understand what to do with all those tubs of protein powder that are in my cupboard because <laughs> I keep forgetting to like cancel my subscription and yeah. they just keep coming and coming and I'm like I'm not drinking this fast enough so and if you are work. the type of person who wants to try these and you don't have like a tub of protein you can go buy like the individual packets like at Whole Foods or Kroger yeah. um, they'll have so you can just buy like what you need um, if you're not a big protein powder person all so. right well if people have questions they want these recipes or they need some of your services yeah actually katehorning.com is my new website I've got Ooh. a lot more stuff on there so um, definitely check it out there'll be healthy recipes all the things and hopefully give you a little more inspiration as you you know try to eat a little healthier this year and she's gonna join us next time with more great ideas yes. to kind of help you keep on target for your goals in 2023 but we will see you next time